Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Islamic Audiobooks Collection. I will be reading Stories of the Prophets by Ibn Kathir, which we downloaded from galamullah.com. Let's read. Page 85. A Thief Among the Brothers. The next day, while their bags were being filled with grains to load onto the camels, Joseph ordered one of his attendants to place the king's gold cup, which was used for measuring the grain, into Benjamin's saddlebag. When the brothers were ready to set out, the gates were locked and a court crier shouted, Oh, you travellers, you are thieves. The accusation was most unusual and the people gathered around Joseph's brothers. What have you lost? his brothers inquired. A soldier said, The king's golden cup. Whoever can trace it will be given a beast load of grain. Joseph's brothers said with all innocence, We have not come here to corrupt the land and steal. Joseph's officers said, as he had instructed them, What punishment should you choose for the thief? The brothers answered, According to our law, whoever steals becomes a slave to the owner of the property. The officers agreed, we shall apply your law instead of the Egyptian law, which provides for imprisonment. The chief officer ordered his soldiers to start searching the caravan. Joseph was watching the incident from high upon his throne. He had given instructions for Benjamin's bag to be the last to be searched. When they did not find the cup in the bags of the ten older brothers, the brothers sighed in relief. Benjamin is accused. There remained only the bag of the youngest brother. Joseph said, intervening for the first time, that there is no need to search his saddle as he did not look like a thief. His brothers affirmed, We will not move an inch unless his saddle is searched as well. We are the sons of a noble man, not thieves. The soldiers reached in their hands and pulled out the king's cup. The brothers exclaimed, If he steals now, a brother of his has stolen before. They strayed from the present issue in order to blame a particular group of the children of Jacob. Joseph heard their resentment with his own ears and was filled with regret. Yet he swallowed his own resentment, keeping it within. He said to himself, You went further and fared worse. It shall go bad with you and worse hereafter, and Allah knows your intention. Silence fell upon them after these remarks by the brothers. Then they forgot their secret satisfaction and thought of Jacob. They had taken an oath with him that they would not betray his son. They began to beg Joseph for mercy. Joseph, O minister, take one of us instead. He is the son of a good man, and we can see that you are a good man. Joseph answered calmly, How can you want to set free the man who has stolen the king's cup? It would be sinful. The brothers went on pleading for mercy. However, the guard said that the king had spoke and his word was law. Judah, the eldest, was much worried and told the others, We promised our father in the name of Allah not to fail him. I will therefore stay behind and will only return if my father permits me to do so. Joseph meets Benjamin and the accusation, Quranic. Regarding this scene, Almighty Allah said, And when they entered according to their father's advice, it did not avail them in the least against the will of Allah. It was but a need of Jacob's inner self which he discharged, and verily he was endowed with knowledge because we had taught him. But most men know not. And when they went in before Joseph, he betook his brother Benjamin to himself and said, Verily, I am your brother, so grieve not for what they used to do. So when he had furnished them forth with their provisions, he put the golden bowl 
in his brother's bag. Then a crier cried, O oh, you in the caravan, surely you are thieves. They, turning towards them, said, What is it that you have missed? They said, We have missed the golden bowl of the king, and for him who produces it is the reward of a camel load. I will be bound by it. They said, By Allah, indeed you know that we came not to make mischief in the land, and we are no thieves. They, Joseph brothers, said, The penalty should be that he in whose bag it is found should be held for the punishment of the crime. Thus we punish the Zalameen, wrongdoers, etc. So he, Joseph, began the search in their bags before the bag of his brother. Then he brought it out of his brother's bag. Thus did we plan for Joseph. He could not take his brother by the law of the king as a slave, except that Allah willed it. So Allah made the brothers to bind themselves with their way of punishment, i.e. enslaving of a thief. We raise to degrees whom we please, but over all those endowed with knowledge is the all-knowing, Allah. They, Joseph's brothers, said, If he steals, there was a brother of his, Joseph, who did steal before him. But these things did Joseph keep in himself, revealing not the secrets to them. He said within himself, You are in the worst case, and Allah knows best the truth of what you assert. They said, O ruler of the land, verily, he has an old father who will grieve for him, so take one of us in his place. Indeed, we think you are one of the good doers. He said, Allah forbid that we should take anyone but him with whom we found our property. Indeed, if we did so, we shall be zalimun, wrongdoers. So when they despaired of him, they held a conference in private. The eldest among them said, Know you not that your father did take an oath from you in Allah's name, and before this did fail in your duty with Joseph. Therefore I will not leave this land until my father permits me, or Allah decides my case by releasing Benjamin, and he is the best of judges. Quran 12 verse 68 to 80 Joseph's Plan The brothers left enough provisions behind for Judah, who stayed at a tavern, awaiting the fate of Benjamin. In the meantime, Joseph kept Benjamin in his house as his personal guest, and told him how he had devised the plot to put the king's cup in his bag, in order to keep him behind, so as to protect him. He was also glad that Judah had stayed behind, as he was a good-hearted brother. Joseph secretly arranged to watch over Judah's well-being. Joseph's plan in sending the others back was to test their sincerity, to see if they would come back for the two brothers they had left behind. The brothers confront Jacob. When they arrived home, they entered upon their father calling, O oh, our father, your son has stolen. He was puzzled, scarcely believing the news. He was overwhelmed with sorrow and his eyes wept tears. Patience be with me. Perhaps Allah will return all of them to me. He is most knowing, most wise. A pall of lonesomeness closed over him. Yet he found consolation in patience and trusted in Allah. The brothers confront Jacob, Quranic. Allah revealed to us what happened at their meeting with their father. Return to your father and say, O oh, our father, verily your son, Benjamin, has stolen and we testify not except according to what we know. And we could not know the unseen, and ask the people of the town where we have been, and the caravan in which we returned, and indeed we are telling the truth. He, Jacob, said, Nay, but your own selves have beguiled you into something, so patience is fitting for me. Maybe Allah will bring them back all to me. Truly. He 
Only he is the all-knowing, all-wise. And he turned away from them and said, Alas, my grief for Joseph. And he lost his sight because of the sorrow that he was suppressing. Quran 12 verse 81 to 84. Jacob's request to find Joseph. The father was deeply hurt. Only prayer could comfort him and strengthen his faith and patience. Weeping all those years for his beloved son Joseph, and now one more of his best sons had been snatched from him. Jacob almost lost his sight. The other sons pleaded with him, O father, you are a noble prophet and a great messenger of Allah. Unto you descended revelation, and people received guidance and faith from you. Why are you destroying yourself in this way? Jacob replied, Rebuking me will not lessen my grief. Only the return of my sons will comfort me. My sons, go in search of Joseph and his brother. Do not despair of Allah's mercy. Jacob's request to find Joseph, Quranic. Allah the Almighty told us. They said, By Allah, you will never cease remembering Joseph until you become weak with old age or until you be of the dead. He said, I only complain of my grief and sorrow to Allah and I know from Allah that which you know not. O my sons, go you and inquire about Joseph and his brother and never give up hope of Allah's mercy. Certainly, no one despairs of Allah's mercy except the people who disbelieve. Quran 12 verse 85 to 87 Joseph reveals himself. The caravan set out for Egypt. The brothers, on their way to see the chief minister, Joseph, were poor and depressed. On reaching Egypt, they collected Judah and called on Joseph, to whom they pleaded. O ruler of the land, a hard time has hit us and our family, and we have brought but poor capital. So pay us full measure and be charitable to us. Truly, a large as reward the charitable. Quran 12 verse 88 At the end, they begged Joseph. They asked alms of him, appealing to his heart, reminding him that Allah rewards alms givers. At this moment, in the midst of their plight, Joseph spoke to them in their native tongue, saying, Do you know what you did with Joseph and his brother when you were ignorant? They said, Are you indeed Joseph? He said, I am Joseph, and his is my brother, Benjamin. Allah has indeed been gracious to us. Verily, he who fears Allah with obedience to him, by abstaining from sins and evil deeds, and by performing righteous good deeds, and is patient, then surely Allah makes not the reward of the good doers to be lost. They said, By Allah, indeed Allah has preferred you above us, and we certainly have been sinners. Quran 12 verse 89-91 The brothers began to tremble with fear, but Joseph, comforted them. No approach on you this day. May Allah forgive you, and he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Quran 12 verse 92. Jacob learns about Joseph. Joseph embraced them, and together they wept with joy. It was not possible for Joseph to leave his responsible office without proper replacement, so he advised his brothers, Go with this shirt of mine and cast it over the face of my father. He will become clear-sighted and bring to me all your family. Quran 12 verse 93 And so the caravan headed back for Palestine. We leave the scene in Egypt and return to Palestine and the house of Jacob. The old man is sitting in his room. Tears have been flowing down his cheeks. He stands up all of a sudden, dresses and goes out to his son's wives. Then he lifts up his face to heaven 
and sniffs the air. The wife of the eldest son remarked, Jacob has come out of his room today. The women inquired about what was amiss. There was a hint of a smile on his face. The others asked him, How do you feel today? He answered, I can smell Joseph in the air. The wives left him alone, saying to one another that there was no hope for the old man. He will die of weeping over Joseph. Did he talk about Joseph's shirt? I do not know. He said he could smell him. Perhaps he has gone mad. That day, the old man wanted a cup of milk to break his fast, for he had been fasting. At night, he changed his clothes. The caravan was travelling in the desert with Joseph's shirt hidden among the grain. It neared the old man's estate. He gesticulated in his room, and then he prayed a long time, lifting his hands to the heaven and sniffing the air. He was weeping as the shirt was nearing him. And when the caravan departed, their father said, I do indeed feel the smell of Joseph. If only you think me not a dotard, a person who has weakness of mind because of old age. They said, By Allah, certainly you are in your old error. Then, when the bearer of the glad tidings arrived, he cast the shirt over his face and he became clear-sighted. He said, Did I not say to you, I know from Allah that which you know not? They said, O oh, our father, ask forgiveness from Allah for our sins. Indeed, we have been sinners. Quran 12 verse 94 to 97 Jacob and Joseph meet. The story began with a dream and it ends with the interpretation of the dream. Almighty Allah narrated. He said, I will ask my Lord for forgiveness for you. Verily, he, only he, is the oft forgiving, the most merciful. Then, when they entered unto Joseph, he betook his parents to himself and said, Enter Egypt, if Allah will, in security. And he raised his parents to the throne, and they fell down before him prostrate. And he said, O oh my father, this is the interpretation of my dream of old. My Lord has made it come true. He was indeed good to me, and when he took me out of prison and brought you all here, out of the Bedouin life, after Satan had sown enmity between me and my brothers. Certainly, my Lord is the most courteous and kind unto whom he will. Truly he, only he, is the all-knowing, the all-wise. Quran 12 verse 98 to 100 Epilogue Consider his feelings now that his dream has come true. He prays to Allah. My Lord, you have indeed bestowed on me of the sovereignty and taught me the interpretation of my dreams. The only creator of the heavens and the earth, you are my wali, protector, helper, supporter, guardian, etc. In this world and in the hereafter, cause me to die as a Muslim, the one submitting to your will, and join me with the righteous. Quran 12 verse 101 Joseph arranged an audience with the king for himself and his family to ask the king's permission for them to settle in Egypt. Joseph was an asset to the kingdom and the king was happy to have him remain with his household. Joseph prostrated to Allah in gratitude. The death of Jacob and Joseph Before he died, Jacob advised his children to adhere to the teachings of Islam, the religion of all of Allah's prophets. Allah the Almighty revealed, Or were you witness when death approached Jacob, when he said unto his sons, What will you worship after me? They said, We shall worship your Elah, God, Allah, the Elah, God, of your father, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, one Elah, God, and to him we submit in Islam. Quran 12 verse 133 
Joseph, peace be upon him, at the moment of his death, asked his brothers to bury him beside his forefathers if they were to leave Egypt. So when Joseph passed away, he was mummified and placed in a coffin until such a time he could be taken out of Egypt and buried beside his forefathers, as he had requested. It was said that he died at the age of 110. That is it for today. Jazakallah khair for listening.